So picture this, the Pokemon TCG was in its fastest metagame we have ever seen. Attacks were being fired off for 240 damage as early as your first turn of the game, meaning rounds were decided in record time. High powered one shots were being fired off left, right and centre with no counterplay for these turbo engine decks. That was until a budget card came out of nowhere to single handedly change that all for good and the transformation only took a single day, taking the whole community by surprise. This is the story of how a budget card changed the Pokemon TCG forever. The date is April 2017. The Pokemon TCG standard format was Primal Clash through to Sun and Moon. The main decks were some of the silliest I've ever seen. We had Volcanion, an all basic attacking deck that revolved around Volcanion EX. Its ability was Steam Up, allowing you to discard a fire energy from your hand to boost your basic fire type Pokemon damage by 30 this turn. Very strong. And this stacked, so if you had three Volcanion EX out, you could use Steam Up three times. Meaning, if you were to then swing with Volcanic Heat after those three Steam Ups, you were dealing a table shattering 220 damage. This was enough to wreck the entire metagame in one fell attack. There was another Volcano in the deck, a one prize one, that helped with this strategy perfectly, since it had the power heater attack, which for one fire energy would deal 20 damage and attach two fire energy to two of your benched Pokemon, one each. While the 20 damage does seem pretty low, after those steam up boosts, it would actually start to add up really nicely and was perfect at trading with other one prize decks in the format, especially since it was a basic with 130 HP. Volcanion would also play a Salamance EX, which would be a nuke attacker with its beastly fang attack dealing a whopping 50 for each EX card your opponent had in play. This was amazing for the mirror match or to be honest against pretty much any other EX deck since the whole format revolved around using Hooper EX. Since when you put it into play, you could search your deck for three other EX cards and put them in your hand. Meaning one Hooper EX would become two attackers, like Volcanium for example, or a Salamance even, and then a Shaman EX to draw cards afterwards. Shaman EX was a format stable, allowing you to draw to add six cards in your hand when you put it in play. Anytime you can draw cards in a Pokemon TCG without playing a supporter, you have to take it seriously and Shane Mini X was one of the best ways to do that of all time. This would see playing Volcanion and pretty much every other deck in format of course. Volcanion would also play Fighting Fury Belt to boost its HP by 40 and damage by 10, making the EX and even the one prizer very tanky. And don't forget about Max Elixirs. These would help you turbo out energy since you could look at the top six cards of your deck and attach one basic energy you find there to one of your benched Pokemon. Doesn't stop there though, because Trainers Mail and VS Seeker would keep you churning through your deck at lightning speeds. This led to Volcanium winning OCIC 2017 via Pedro Torres. This same Item Core and Hooper Core were played in Mega Rayquaza EX2, except you could argue Mega Rayquaza was even more fast and terrifying. Emerald Break would deal 30 times the amount of bench Pokemon you had in play, and this would combo silly well with Skyfield Stadium meaning you could now have 8 bench Pokemon in play, meaning you were one-shotting everything in the format with a full bench. Nice. But it gets better, since Mega Ray could get rolling in a single turn, since it had the Delta Evolution Ancient trait, meaning you could evolve the Rayquaza EX the same turn you put it down. So as long as you had a Spirit Link attached, you could bench the Mega Rayquaza, attach the Spirit Link, evolve into Mega Rayquaza, and then attach a double colorless energy, and then to top it all off, you could use Mega Turbo to attach that last energy from the discard pile so you could turn one Emerald Break. This might sound like a stretch though, right? Don't remember we have all the item draw like Trainer's Mail. Once you found the Skyfield, you go absolutely nuts. And don't forget we had Hooper with Scoundrel Ring to find all the EX cards you needed plus Shame in EX so you could keep ripping through your deck. This meant Mega Rayquaza was scary fast, scary is consistent, and had some scary attitude. This led to Mega Ray getting third place at LAIC 2017. Darkrai was a similar turbo deck that would spam Dark Pulse as much as possible, leading for massive KOs. With all the item draw and Max Elixir in format, it was very easy to get those energies in play. 
And don't forget about baby Yvettel too. Oblivion Ring was very helpful. Mega Mewtwo was slightly different, but still terrifying. Mega Mewtwo had the Psychic Infinity Attack. That would deal 30 for each energy attached to both active Pokemon. This could, and often would, result in massive KOs thanks to double colorless energy and Mega Turbo like we mentioned earlier. However, it did something else that was evil. You see, the basic Mewtwo EX had the damage change attack that would swap the damage between both active Pokemon. So if your Mewtwo had damage on and your opponent's active didn't, you would swap your damage onto your opponent's active and you would take their zero damage, essentially fully healing yourself in the process. With Shrine of Memories in play, the Mega Mewtwo can now copy that attack. Meaning if your opponent ever left any damage on you by not one-shotting you, you could just bounce it straight back to them. Gross. Mega Mewtwo also played Garbodor to turn off the opponent's abilities, stopping the Shaman EX, Hooper and Volcanium. But more on that later. The only other deck I want to draw your attention to is Desi Plume. This deck would use Forest of Giant Plants so you could evolve your grass types in a single turn. So you could get Decidueye GX into play as early as turn 1. And Vileplume too. Decidueye would be your damage dealer. Razor Leaf was okay, but with Feather Arrow support it would be even scarier. Since Feather Arrow, Decidueye's ability, would let you place two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon once per turn. And bear in mind again, you could use this multiple times if you had multiple Decidueye GX out. Vileplume was the start of the show though, since Vileplume would prevent both players from playing any item cards once it was in play. This would lock down players as early as turn 1, thanks to Forest of Giant Plants. Before you had a chance to even play a single card, that right there is super scary times. Because we've already seen how important these items are in this format, VS Seeker, Trainer's Mail, Ultra Ball. Vileplume just said no to all of them. This led to a deadly metagame, full of big scary Pokemon who would turbo out massive amount of damage in record time. We have never really seen a metagame as fast as this. And it was about to get worse, since Guardian Rising was about to release into the standard format, and it had some crazy cards for this metagame. Quite honestly, Guardian's Rising has a strong case for being the strongest set of all time. Tapu Lele GX was the obvious standout. Wonder Tag would let you grab any supporter card when you put it into play. This ability has always been strong whenever it's been printed. For example, it was the focal point of the 2015 World Championship deck, Archie's Blastoise, where Jirachi X was often used to grab Archie's from the deck so you could put Blastoise into play turn 1. In this metagame, Lele could grab Lissandre so you could end games, Olympia to switch, Hex Maniac to turn off your opponent's abilities, or Bridget so you can set up your board. As well as some drawing options as well of course, like Professor Sycamore or N so you could draw cards or disrupt absolutely amazing. Bear in mind its attack was actually usable to energy drive. Lele would massively buff all the previous decks we have mentioned, giving them all a new, even scarier level of consistency. Turnator GX would slot right into Volcanion, giving it a much scarier attacker, since Bright Flame would be a straight upgrade over Volcanic Heat. Since for the same energy cost you would deal 160 damage base instead of 130. And you also had a cheeky way to recover energy via Nitro Tank, making for some very scary turn 1 plays. Desi Plume would now have the option to play a new attacker Alolan Ninetales GX. Ice Blade would give the deck a new double colorless energy attack, which was huge by the way, and it worked really well with Feather Arrow, since Ice Blade would do a 50 damage snipe, meaning you could KO 60 or 70 HP Pokemon before your opponent had a chance to evolve them up with just one use of Ice Blade and one use of Feather Arrow. Alolan Ninetales would also take a leaf out of Mega Mewtwo's book with its GX Attack Ice Path, which would just push all damage off itself onto the opponent. Very scary. And it's also worth noting that the basic Alolan Vulpix was insane for this deck too, since Beacon would attack for free and let you search your deck for two Pokemon and put them in your hand. Insane. Guardians Rising would also add all star cards like Lycanroc GX and Metagross GX too, but it would take a while for those cards to shine. So, with all those big decks getting buffed, who was going to save the format? Because believe it or not, the player base was in for a very rude awakening. As people prepared for the Seattle Regionals on the 27th of May, they were feeling hopeful. However, the truly prepared players had stumbled into another card from the set and it was one that was about to take the metagame into a stranglehold and just 
make a mockery. I'm of course talking about Garbodor. This card could really do it all. A stage one Pokemon with the attack Trasher Latch. This attack would deal 20 damage for each item card in your opponent's discard pile. This would add up scarily fast. So for example, if Volcanion decks were going mad with Max Elixir's Ultra Balls VS Seeker, a Garbodor player would just send up an army of these one prize Pokemon to close the game out. And it didn't matter if those Volcanion EX had a Fury Belt attached to boost their HP, because in Guardians Rising, Field Blur existed too, to remove tool cards or stagings from play. This meant the Garbodor player could even start to accelerate items into your discard pile for you, making the Trash Lance threat even faster. This meant Garbodor had no problems KOing anything in the format. Mega Ray, Volcanion, and poor Mega Mewtwo, well, he got hit for weakness, so he was not long left for this world. This shook up the format immensely. Every item card you played was a ticking time bomb that was set to go off eventually. Garbodor was a threat. Although it did have a glaring weakness, it's early game. Since you couldn't really play a Garbodor attacking only deck because at the start of the game, you wouldn't be applying any pressure at all. How could people fix this? Well, out the gates there were two main options, Espeon GX or Dramper GX. Espeon GX was funky, since the Sun and Moon Eevee from the previous set had the energy evolution ability, so you could get Espeon into play in a single turn. You could even attack with Psybeam in that turn too, which would deal 30 damage and confuse the opponent. A very, very nice attack, since your opponent will not really want to stay confused, so they will end up burning through some resources to try and find switching cards to get around it which in turn would accelerate your trash lanch win condition. If you were to attach another DCE to that Espeon, you could now use Psychic. This would deal 60 damage plus 30 for each energy attached to your opponent's active. Considering most of the format at the time would have three energy attached, this would be doing 150 damage, which is decent, because you can always attach a choice belt to get to the magic 180 damage number. Divide DX would be good for stopping games as early as turn two, or closing games out at the end by picking up Miss KOs, since it would let you place 10 damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon wherever you like. This could pick off low HP Pokemon like Eevee on your second turn of the game to pick up those missed KOs. Espeon could also make use of the Ancient Origins Evolutions, who would all give your other Stage 1 Pokemon a new type. For example, the Jolteon would give all your Stage 1's Lightning Typing, and the Flareon would offer Fire Typing. This meant Espeon Jets could now be hitting for three different weaknesses at the same time. Very tricky. The other partner for Garbodor was Dramper GX, a new card from Guardians Rising. Dramper also had a tricky one energy attack, Righteous Edge, which would just straight up discard a special energy attached to your opponent's active. But Berserk is what it was really all about dealing 80 damage plus 70 if any of your bench Pokemon had any damage counters on them already. With Choice Band again, this would hit the magic 180 damage marker that would one-shot most basic Pokemon in the metagame. And the prior damage stipulation was very easy to manipulate via Team Magma's secret base that would place two damage counters on any basic Pokemon that was benched while it was in play. This would also provide a little bit of extra damage on your opponent's Pokemon too. And Big Wheel GX gave you a stunning turn one play, giving you a 10 card hand to start the game. Really, really good. Both of these variants were super strong, super fast and super consistent. And we haven't even discussed the fact that you could play the different Garbodor in this deck too. That was just as good as Trash Lanch, but for a different reason. Breakpoint Garbodor had the ability Garbo Toxin that would shut off all other abilities while it was in play, as long as you had a tool card attached. This was backbreaking for a lot of the former, since they all relied on Hooper, Shaman, or other abilities like Irritating Pollen or Steam Up, meaning Garbatoxin would grind these decks down to a halt immediately. Like how good is Desi Plume without its abilities? Not very good. And since Trashalance and Garbotoxin evolve off the same basic Pokemon, you now had access to these two horrible, horrible cards at the same time. This meant your late game was now absolutely diabolical, since you could turn off abilities, take a big Trashalance KO with a one prize Pokemon, of course, 
and play N to reduce your opponent's hand size down to two or maybe even one, effectively closing the door on any kind of comeback whatsoever. So now we know all about Trash Lance Garbodor and how good it was, how well do you think it did in that Seattle regional? You know, a few in day two, taking it all home maybe? How about an absolutely staggering 24 out of the top 32 slots, making up 75% of the day two metagame? These kind of numbers are unheard of in the Pokemon TCG, and we haven't seen anything like it since. Garbodor literally booted Volcanion, Mega Ray, and Mega Mewtwo clean out of the format. Format staples like Acrobike, Trainer's Mail, were also booted into oblivion, since just having them in your deck meant the Trash Lance threat was way too high. Even VS Seeker counts, one of the best items we've ever seen, started to waver from a staple 4 to sometimes 3 in decks. Newer versions of Darkrai wouldn't even play VS Seeker, just to have a better garb matchup. Bear in mind, these cards like VS Seeker and Trainer's Mail would be four counts in every other format that have ever existed in the Pokemon TCG because they are that good. But Garbodor just said no, no, no to all of them. When it was all said and done, Sam Chen won Seattle with Drampa Garb and the format was changed forever. Not just that though, the Pokemon TCG was changed forever because we have never had a metagame as fast as that pre-Guardians Rising format. And I'm unsure if you'll ever see it ever again. If you like that video, why don't you like the video and subscribe. And why don't you watch this video here, where I go through the entire Pokemon TCG metagame.